or failure. It is not my understanding that out of scope requires somebody to be read out. It may be. I'm not a security professional, but you, you appear to... You so you're out of seat right now with an answer that we received from the Department of Justice. And that is an interesting answer that you just gave, that you may have been out of sync. And the question now becomes, is policies and procedures failed or not failed? This is a serious investigation, which I do take seriously. And if you were to have been read out, you should have been read out. That is my final answer statement, not a question, not opposed. I yield back. The gentleman from Rhode Island, Mr. Cicilline, is recognized for five And Mr. Chairman, I look forward to a couple of extra minutes as each of my Republican colleagues have had. Uh, Mr. Strzok, um, serving on this committee and representing the state of Rhode Island has been one of the greatest honors of my life. But the conduct of this committee today has been, for me, tremendously sad, embarrassing, and really dangerous to our democracy. And I want to apologize to you for the way you've been treated by this committee. And for the American people who are watching, you ought not wonder why they've lost confidence in Congress and are sick of the kind of circus that they saw being conducted in this room today. Because rather than focusing on urgent issues like family separation, reasonable efforts to reduce gun violence in our communities, considering legislation to reform our broken immigration system, passing legislation to reduce the cost of prescription drugs, addressing the inability of Americans who fall behind in their student loans to discharge that debt in bankruptcy, or oversight of the many conflicts of interest and corruption in this administration, we're having yet another hearing on the Hillary Clinton emails. What you should understand, Mr. Strzok, is the reason my Republican colleagues will not let you answer a question is because they're not interested in your answers. This is about promoting a narrative. You are being, you're a prop. So they can promote a narrative in an ongoing effort to distract from the serious investigation of the special counsel that is closing in on the Trump inner circle. This is a campaign to undermine that work. And sadly, they'll do whatever is necessary to do it in concert with the president. Attack the FBI. Attack the Department of Justice. Undermine the rule of law. And so your emails are a perfect foil for this effort. They're not interested in hearing your context and your explanation because it's not about you. It's about protecting the president. My colleagues have acted more like they're on the defense team for Donald Trump than exercising their very serious oversight responsibilities as members of these two committees. You know, Robert Mueller was praised to the heavens by everyone, Republican and Democratic alike, when he was appointed. Now he's a villain. What's the only thing that's changed? 19 indictments, five guilty pleas, and the circle's closing in. So I accept your sworn testimony about the difference between bias and the actions you took. We don't have to take your word for it alone, although I do. The IG report of 500 pages, interviews, review of documents comes to the same conclusions. We find the decisions made were consistent with the analytic approach described above. We found that these specific decisions were the result of discretionary judgments made during the course of an investigation by the media agents and prosecutors, and that these judgments were all were reasonable. So it's, we don't, we don't have, there's a big analysis that was done. Lots of interviews, 500 pages. That's the same conclusion, uh, the same representation you've made today. But don't be frustrated because they're not interested in that. This is about promoting a narrative. So we know, of course, Mr. Strzok, that the president, the, the intelligence communities unequivocally conclude that Russia interfered in our elections, that it was directed by Vladimir Putin and for the purposes of helping Donald Trump and hurting Hillary Clinton. Isn't that correct? Uh, yes, sir. Do you have any reason to uh, doubt the uh, assessment of our intelligence agencies that may be made with high confidence? No, sir. And thereafter, the Senate Intelligence Committee, in a bipartisan way, a Republican-led committee, came to the same conclusion. Isn't that right? Yes, sir. And yet the President of the United States and members of the administration continue to deny that the Russian government interfered in our elections. In fact, just as recently as June 28th, the President said, Russia continues to say they had nothing to do with meddling in our elections. Yes, sir. And even Secretary Nielsen said, I do not believe that I've seen that conclusion that the specific intent was to help President Trump win. I don't recall hearing that. Okay. But and in addition to that, you know about a Trump Tower meeting where there was a discussion uh, between members of the Trump campaign and Russian operatives, correct? I, I, I am aware of that. And the and president be, then... Uh, sir, I, I would just, I, I would not characterize it one way or the other as okay. Russian operatives or not, but I'm aware of them. Okay. And in that meeting, there was a discussion about some dirt that the Russians had on Hillary Clinton, correct? Uh, media reporting has indicated that. And the president then issued a statement in which he lied about that meeting and said it was about an adoption discussion. 
Correct. Uh, the, those statements have been made. Again, I'm relying on what's been reported in the media, not FBI or special counsel. So would you tell me, Mr. Strzok, in the time that I have remaining, what should we conclude? What, what, what raises eyebrows for you about members of a presidential campaign meeting with a foreign adversary of the United States to talk about dirt from, from their about their opponent and then lying about the, the nature of that meeting? What, what should we, why should that concern the American people? Well, sir, I don't want to... I don't want to comment on any specific fact pattern or anything that relates to an ongoing investigation. Uh, you know, I, so I, I hesitate and I don't want to do that in this context. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd just like to note for the record, we've had zero hearings on Russian interference in the American presidential election, zero hearings in this committee about our efforts to secure our democracy and secure the elections coming up in November. We've had hundreds of hours devoted to Hillary Clinton's email. This committee has failed in its responsibilities to secure our elections, which is a responsibility we have to the American people. And then when we finally have an opportunity to raise the issue, instead <coughs> we're going to talk about Hillary Clinton's email. Shame I, on all of I'm you. The gentleman History has is going to judge you very harshly for this behavior. You're you. the gentleman from Florida, Mr. DeSantis, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Strzok, you've defended your actions, said that you did not uh, evince bias, that your actions weren't motivated by bias, but the Inspector General disagreed. Um, when he asked you about the insurance policy text, the will stop it text, you provided an explanation similar that you did today, um, and he found your explanation to be unpersuasive, and you, you're, you're aware of that, correct? I'm not aware of that with regard to that text. Well, he did. He testified when we had him in here uh, in June um, in, in response to my questioning. He also said said that your explanation for how you handled the Anthony Weiner laptop, you delayed, you didn't take action initially. Um, he said your, your explanation for that, and he did note that in the report, was not persuasive. You're aware of that, correct? Uh, sir, I'm aware of facts rebutting that, that he has rebutting that specific assertion. Well, he testified to us that he was not persuaded by your explanation for why you focused on the Trump-Russia collusion and you let the Wiener thing uh, sit. And then he testified in front of our committee that it was reasonable to infer that your actions involving Wiener's laptop, the fact that you didn't pursue that aggressively, that it is reasonable to infer that it was because of the bias that you evince in those text messages. Are you aware of his testimony with that? Uh, not specific to that, but I'll accept your representation. Yes, and I think it's important to show while the IG report said the Clinton charging decision was not necessarily due to bias, he said that the Wiener is absolutely a fair game to infer that, and then they're obviously continuing to investigate the genesis of this Russia uh, interference case. Do you also know that Rod Rosenstein, on June 28th, when he testified in front of this committee, uh, he said you were biased. Uh, are you aware of that? I'm in not aware of that. In response to my questions? Yes, he did. And he also says that the bias that you evince, it does undermine the integrity of your investigative actions, and it causes the American people to lose confidence in, in the institution. Do you know he said that? Uh, I don't, and he's... Well, he did. I so, I just, the idea that there's no bias here is not, I, I don't think your explanations have been credible, um, and I think that if you acted so, inappro so appropriately, you know, Mueller removed you from the team. You're now at Human Resources, which is obviously a demotion. Um, and then you are now the sub one of the subjects of an ongoing IG investigation, correct? No, sir. You're not, your conduct is not being reviewed by, by Horowitz about what you did or did not do in I, the Russia I'm, collusion I'm case. I'm unaware of being a subject of any ongoing IG Well, I, gear, I bet you your conduct is at issue there. Let me ask you this. Um, you opened up the counterintelligence investigation on 31 July. Was that because of the George Papadopoulos information? Sir, I can't get into the... the Guidance that the FBI has provided me about answers I can provide, that gets into a level of detail that I can't, well, you, uh, that I've been directed not to provide. You have answered some questions. I mean, I think this has been a little bit of convenience. I mean, you've answered some questions about there was grave concerns and all this stuff about why you were doing it. You didn't do that. Um, the dossier, was the dossier a part of why you opened up the investigation? Uh, no, but sir, none of this has been convenient. All of okay, this so has been based on what the department has worked out with Chairman Goodlatte about what is permitted and not. This okay. is not a function. So the dossier was not part of it. Um, so that's important. When did you learn the dossier was funded by Hillary Clinton and the Democratic Party? Um, I cannot, I don't think that's an accurate representation in the department or the FBI has directed me not to answer that question based on well, right. So Hillary DNC sent to Perkins Coie, who sent to Fusion, who paid, you know, I mean, come on. Uh, again, that's, I, I it was a not, political document, correct? I, I, 
the, the latter is close. I'm not, I cannot comment. I, the FBI has directed me to not answer that question. Would it be fair to say that the dossier, was, what would you choose? Is it, a, is it a political document, opposition research, or is it legitimate intelligence? Sir, I, I would very much like to answer that question. Okay. I'll I have look. been directed by the FBI that I may not get into that based on operational requirements or equities. So here's the issue I think we have. We see the bias that you did, your explanations for why you said what you did, you know, really aren't credible. We're trying to get to the genesis of why open up a counterintelligence investigation against the opposing party's campaign. I'm with you about focusing on Russia and holding them accountable, but you tried to rope in the other party's nominee. There was also, also a lot of bias, and then we can't get any answers to the questions of what the so, genesis of any of this was. So, and let me finish. May 18th, Chairman Gowdy mentioned, you say, look, there, my concern's that there's no big there there. So this had been going on for at least 10 months. I think it was going on before July 31st. And there you are, Mueller's appointed, and you can't even identify any reason to suspect that there was collusion between Trump's campaign and Russia. There was no big there there after 10 months. So that's the concern, is that somebody like you who said we'll stop him, who said we needed insurance policy, that you let that bias, you wanted there to be something there. You wanted it to be true, and that, I think, influenced your actions. You can prove us wrong by providing us the information. I like the information on any type of informants uh, pre-July uh, 31st. I like the information on what you used to open up the counterintelligence investigation. I want to know whether that was any foreign <laughs> intelligence involved or was, whether it was funneled through the State Department. These are all questions that if we just put those out and answer them, then a lot of us would be able to then make, make I think, American people can make a judgment. I'm going over my time. Uh, I yield back. Mr. Chairman. Time of the gentleman has expired. Question. Briefly. Sir, uh, two things. You asked why I couldn't explain why a case would be open. I don't think that's accurate. If you look at Director Comey's statement when the Department of Justice had authorized him to say that the FBI had opened a case into allegations that the government of Russia had made an offer uh, of, of assistance and the potential involvement of members of the Trump campaign. I cannot envision a scenario where that would not be a reasonable predication to open an investigation. Well, if it's Papadopoulos, that's not quite what they, what they had. Sir, I mean, I, I you didn't quite the get there. I, I know the Comey may have said that, but you didn't quite get there. So if I it's Papadopoulos, the that's the, weak. I think the characterization was uh, that it was a credible source of information stands on its own. I don't think anybody in this committee would argue that, one, it wasn't appropriate to open that, and two, that it wasn't absolutely we, we have questions about whether it was appropriate because we don't know the underlying information. And, and sir, we read in the New York Times from leaks that it was just because Papadopoulos said at a bar. The time of the gentleman has expired. I, 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 I I'm, know, trying, that's I'm, the reason I'm trying to respond. Regular to order. And, Regular order. And the so, chair sir, recognizes I think the gentleman. Mr. Chairman, there is, I was not, there's a second element of a question the gentleman. Very, like. no. <laughs> I, you raised the question about whether or not I agreed with the Inspector General that I had acted in any way that was biased. You, you, the you had an opportunity to answer that earlier. Sir, I, I did not. So to this the gentleman from I Illinois, Mr. Krishnamurthy, is recognized for five minutes. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Strzok. Uh, Mr. Strzok, on July 3rd, your lawyer, Mr. Goldman, made the following statement to Chris Cuomo on CNN regarding you, his client. On Fox News, they talk about him as the center of this anti-Trump cabal that was determined to throw the election against Trump. None of this has a shred of truth. Do you agree with this statement, sir? Uh, I do. And in a June 19th op-ed in USA Today, your lawyer said, regarding the Russia investigation, uh, what we call the Russia collusion investigation, that you and your team, quote-unquote, went out of their way to prevent leaks and actively ensured that news reports did not overplay the seriousness of the investigation. Is that true, sir? Yes. Now, tell us why it's so important to prevent leaks from the FBI to journalists or to others. Well, leaks are terrible. Uh, they, they, they undercut things in a variety of ways. They can upend investigations. They can lead to incorrect assumptions. They can let witnesses, subjects know that they're being investigated. They can lead to wild speculation, destruction of evidence, any number of really bad dis disclosure of classified information, any number of really bad adverse things. Got it. The DOJ IG's report has this to say about your involvement in the decision to inform Congress about the Wiener laptop. Quote, unquote, Strzok explained that the decision to seek a search warrant for the Wiener laptop was known to many people beyond the mid-year team 
And this raised a concern that this information could leak. Um, is this statement from the IG's report true? Yes. Now, could you unpack that for us a little bit? First of all, um, you said, according to the IG's report, that the search warrant for the Wiener laptop was known to many people beyond the mid-year team. Um, could you explain whether any of those people would be in the New York field office? Uh, so the invest my recollection is that the investigation of um, the crimes against children case of uh, Mr. Wiener was handled out of the New York field office by the Southern District of New York or, or maybe the Eastern District. I, I think it was SDNY. And so uh, the people to whom you're referring included people in the New York field office, correct? That's correct. And you had concerns about their actions if Director Comey did not inform Congress about this uh, Wiener laptop. I, I did not have concerns about New York. My concerns were, were just general, that the more people who are aware of something, the greater chance that it uh, leaks out somehow. But it, those concerns were not specific in my mind to New York. Okay. Um, let me ask you about this. Um, in a report, in that same report, Attorney General Loretta Lynch recalls a conversation with then Director Comey in the final days of the 2016 election. Quote, unquote, he, referring to Comey, said, it's clear to me that there's a cadre of senior people in New York who have a deep and visceral hatred of C Secretary Clinton. And he said it is, quote, unquote, deep. Were you aware of this, uh, of this concern? I, I was aware of the, certainly some of the press reporting and some people expressing that concern, yes. Was one of those people uh, uh, Director Comey? Uh, a person having that concern? Yes. Yes. Could you explain to me a little bit about that and how that, uh, in your view, affected um, the revelation of the uh, warrant for Wiener's laptop? Uh, I, you'd have to ask Director Comey that. I think the... There, there was discussion, I remember, and particularly some of it was in the context of reporting from uh, Mr. Giuliani and others talking about connections to New York. But I, again, I don't want to scapegoat New York because a lot of people were aware of it and there were concerns just about the number of folks. But uh, with regard to Mr. Comey, uh, my recollection is that he was aware of those concerns, but I was not privy to discussions he had with the Attorney General or other, other concerns he might have had outside of my a presence or conversation. Now, with regard to Mr. Giuliani, on October 25th, then-Trump campaign advisor Rudy Giuliani promised a quote-unquote pretty big surprise coming up in the campaign. On October 28th, Giuliani claimed to be in contact with former agents and a quote-unquote few active agents who obviously don't want to identify themselves. Um, let me make sure I have this right. There was a concern that there is a deep and visceral hatred towards Secretary Clinton in the New York field office. At the same time, Mr. Giuliani says that he's having uh, contacts with agents, um, active agents. Um, what is, can you give us your take on this and your comments on this particular issue? Uh, I recall that comment. I recall it uh, caused me a lot of concern. I, you know, and why? Before. Why did it cause you concern? Uh, because while it's certainly possible that Mr. Giuliani is exaggerating or, or engaging in some sort of uh, uh, puffery, the reality is that also given the things that were going on, given the timing that the laptop was there and he was talking about that in the context of a big surprise, it caused me great concern that he had information uh, about that. In other that words, he should that, not have had. that he should not have had. Correct. Through a leak? Uh, uh, through an unauthorized disclosure, sure, leak, yes. Thank you, sir. The uh, members are advised that there are floor, uh, votes on the floor of the House. How many are there? Four. Four votes. Oh, Mr. Strzok, you probably have a, a good 45 minutes to... I think you have time. All right. Uh, members are advised that this will be the last one, so if you want to head to the floor for votes, but uh, the chair recognizes the gentleman from Kentucky, Mr. Massey. Mr. Chairman, I yield uh, my five minutes to the gentleman from Ohio, Mr. Jordan. Sir, I can't hear you. Just a couple questions. Um, That's almost five. Agent Strzok, in earlier round, you said you never talked to Glenn Simpson, no, right? Correct. And you never talked to Nellie yeah. Orr. We also did Correct. It. And you wouldn't say whether you knew if Nellie Orr worked for Fusion. Is that correct? Uh, my understanding from my direction above the FBI is I'm not permitted to answer that question. Okay. 
But you did say you talked with Bruce Orr, fellow Department of Justice employee, and Nellie Orr's Par husband. Yes. But it is common knowledge that Nellie Orr worked for Fusion in the summer of 2016. Is that right? Uh, I don't know if it's common knowledge or not. It's been in all kinds of reports. Oh, it is now. All kinds yes, of absolutely. press reports. All right. You met with uh, Bruce Orr in, in 2016 and 2017. So the, the time the, period that we're focused on. To the best of my recollection, yes. All right. And you won't tell me what you guys talked about. Uh, sorry, I can tell you we talked about operational matters that he was involved in, but the you FBI has me. directed me not to give you, not to uh, specifically, you specifics. Specifically, can't, you can't yes, get sir. into specifics and details. Did Bruce Orr give you any documents? Sir, same answer. Uh, it's, I would like to answer that question, but the FBI has directed me not to get into. You can't. My understanding is, Mr. Chairman, the discussions we've had with the FBI, he's allowed to tell us those kind of pieces of information. I'm not asking what the documents were. I'm just asking, did Bruce Orr ever I, hand you documents? I understand full well what your question is, sir, and I would love to answer it. My understanding from the FBI is when it comes to operational details, including whether or not we collected evidence or didn't, that I'm not permitted to answer that. I would, sir, I would love to answer that question. All, all these I mean, you understand where I'm, where I'm coming from, right, Agent Strzok? Sir, I understand your frustration, and, and what I'm here to tell you is I think I mean, the you, answers would you understand? You ease. Yeah, you understand. We got an email from you briefing everybody on the team, all the key players, Rabicki, Baker, Page, Maffa, Prestep, and Andy McCabe. And in that email, you say the dossier that you are now looking at that BuzzFeed is printing has differences from the one given to us by Corn and Simpson. Earlier today, I asked you who Corn and Simpson is, and you wouldn't answer that. It's kind of funny to me because yesterday, David Corn tweeted out, he's the Corn in your email. So the guy himself identified himself. We all know it's David Korn, and then the other name is Simpson. So you, you have this, and we're wondering how the dossier got to, or if, more importantly, if the dossier got to the FBI through media sources, not just through Christopher Steele. And, of course, we know Nellie Orr worked for the guy you're mentioning, Glenn Simpson. She worked for him the whole time. You've never had conversations with her, but... You did have a lot of important conversations on operational matters and ongoing investigations with her husband, Bruce Orr, who's also happened to be reassigned at the Department of Justice. And I'm just one. And you've said that, well, you won't answer the question whether Mr. Orr has given you documents or not. So I'm just wondering if that was the route. Was that the route the dossier went? Glenn Simpson to Nellie Orr to her husband and then to you. Sir, I understand. That's my frustration. I understand your question. I understand your frustration. I understand the absurdity of something produced that you're reading that I've been directed not to answer questions about. The best I can More do importantly, is tell that you, you I wrote. would like to answer you, and I'm afraid it's an answer that would both reassure you and disappoint you. Well, we're uh, going to be asking, I think, Mr. Chairman, if it's okay with you, we're going to be asking the FBI and the Department of Justice to give us those documents that may or may not have been exchanged between Mr. Orr and Agent Strzok. I think that's something this committee would like to have and see what those, uh, if in fact there were documents, what the heck they were. I got a minute. I'll sir, yield it to you. I, sir, I, you're going to love this and it's going to upset the vote. I have been instructed that the FBI has now told me that I can answer questions about the receipt of the documents. So I will defer, well, Mr. Can, Chairman, well, if you would like to well, how hear that or the, I take your vote. The gentleman may proceed with his questions and you may answer. I, before, may I? May I confer with counsel briefly to see if this is completely unbounded or if there are any limitations on what I may say? Well, I've got a lot of questions I've asked all let's, day long. Let's, that let's ask the one to. you've been told you can answer. All right, so let's hear the answer to this one. Which question, sir? The one that's on the table about the documents. Sir, the documents we received from a different source uh, in the initial batch in mid-September. Wait, 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 wait. No, no, no. I, I'm not understanding. You said you got – go back. Did you get documents from Bruce Orr? Uh, yes. At some point, we received material from Mr. Orr. You got documents from Bruce Orr. And what were those documents? Uh, we received documents from Mr. Orr, not me. Excuse me, sir. I can maybe make it simpler. Major Strzok, was it the dossier? Sir, what I am authorized to tell you in response to a question, did you receive any documents from Bruce Orr, the FBI has directed me that I may say, I, the, not, he, not me, the FBI received documents and material from Mr. Orr. Did you? I, I appreciate no, that. 
I appreciate that. But you no. did not from Mr. Orr? No. Okay. But the FBI did get documents from Bruce Orr? Yes, sir. Did they get the dossier from Bruce Orr? Uh, my direction from the FBI, as I may tell you, the FBI received material from this Mr. Orr. Is under now, this is, Congressman, I am This is amazing. I this is amazing. So well, Nellie Orr, as you are. Nellie Orr works for Fusion, works for Glenn Simpson, and she's giving documents. Regular to order, Orr, please. Who's Let us bring the director the of the FBI to answer those questions. The gentleman cannot answer. Well, he's the asked the and Ameri answered. The, the American people. He's asked and answered. He cannot answer. The gentlewoman. Let's have director. The, the, the regular order I is. I understand, the, Mr. Chairman. Regular order. The FBI has now instructed Mr. Strzok that he can answer additional questions, and he, and Mr. Hey, uh, Agent Strzok, but I Gordon ask him other has questions. additional time to get the Mr. answers to those questions that you earlier was thwarted and get it. The FBI approved. Has the FBI also given you permission to say if Glenn Simpson is the name that you use when in the email where you say Simpson? I don't believe they have given me guidance. My most recent understanding of my guidance from the FBI is to, in response to the question of whether the FBI received documents from has the Mr. FBI Orr, given the you, answer is that yes, we did, and has that the FBI is all given I'm you, authorized to has say. Has the FBI given you information to tell me whether you knew Nellie Orr worked for Fusion at the time you were meeting with her husband? Sir, to my knowledge, the FBI has not directed me to uh, or allow me to respond to that. All right. I yield back. Thank you. The committee will stand in recess until immediately after this series of votes.